Robin Bremer is a best-selling author, a publishing coach, and a business developer. She has written over 50 books and published and promoted many other authors' books to the bestseller's status. She got her start by paying almost $2,000 to publish her first book. She also had to pay $12 a book and buy a box of books. This is the same story of many other authors who just paid too much. After publishing her own books for years, her passion is to help other authors be successful in writing, publishing, and promoting without emptying their wallet or purse. She does this through her podcast called Self-Publishing Bestseller, Hints, Tips, and Interviews. To learn more or to start the publishing process of your own book, go to www.robinbremer.net. That's R-O-B-I-N-B-R-E-M-E-R dot net. Welcome to It's Supernatural with Robin Show, where we share personal experiences and scriptures on how you can walk in the supernatural. The show is mixed with off-grid living, toxic-free lifestyle, and a touch of politics. Join our host today for today's podcast, and remember, it's natural to be supernatural. talk about the courts of heaven um basically god showed me something about the courts of heaven that i thought was pretty neat and i'm going to get to the blood in a minute but before i get to the blood i want to talk about the courts of heaven and word curses now this is something that um i never thought about before somebody ministered to me the other day and um i told them something somebody said about me and they said that's a word curse and i didn't really put it together but about 20 years ago, one of my friends who was my best friend said, either you really like Robin, meaning me, either you really like Robin or you really hate Robin. There's no in-between. It's not, you can't like her a little. You either like her a lot or you really, really dislike her. And I've kind of lived with that word curse over me for 20 years without realizing that it was a word curse spoken over me. Um, Because I was having problems... um, I'm not going to go into detail, but I was having problems in, in a certain situation that kept happening, kept happening, and I didn't put it together till after we, 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 I was ministered to and I shared with this person. But that was actually a word curse. So I broke that word curse, and usually when you start working in the courts of heaven or you start breaking word curses or bloodlines and stuff like that, more comes up. Uh, when you get at a standstill, you stay at a standstill, so you you got to move forward. you got to find things that uh, are causing you to be in the situation you're in or the sickness that you have there's root causes and you kind of have to dig out those root causes and and if you just get stagnated and stopped sometimes you just need some another level of ministry or another direction of ministry uh, to go but here's some things you can do in the courts real quick and I went over this once before but I think it's really important that you can go over in regards to the courts of heaven if you're stuck like if you're finding that your family is continuously getting sickness and diseases and you're continuously getting um, financial problems every time you get ahead you get behind and so on but you don't know what to do about it but you understand about the courts of heaven well one of the things God showed me is he says look around you physically And your ancestors physically, look at your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, your aunt, your uncle. What are they going through? Okay, then come against that because that they're in the same bloodline and those things came through the bloodline. For example, if you find that uh, one of your kids is transgender and you look or, or homosexual or gay or something and you're like, where did that come from? But then you begin to look around you physically in your um, in your relatives and you see that there's certain tendencies and then you'll think oh you know then you'll realize oh that's a bloodline I have to come against that you know or alcoholism or addiction or what, whatever uh, so one of the things that you can look at is your physical history of your uh, close relationship and then any stories that your families used to tell about your relatives and take those stories as true and go into the courts of heaven and use those history stories of your relatives and take that to the court of heaven because you don't want that bloodline coming down now we're all born again so we have a new bloodline because we're a new creation in god's eyes but in satan's eyes he's a legalist he's a legalist and he will take any 
thing spoken over you, whether it's in Bible times, uh, curses passed down, or and, and even if it's uh, it, just something spoken in fun, be careful what you watch on TV because those are word curses, and you'll begin to believe them. You, they'll 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 come on you. So 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 some of the things that you can do is look at your local history, look at the history of your family, look at the generations past, and see. Now the other things that you can look at is emotions because emotions oftentimes lead us and when our emotion is leading us that means we're not being led by the holy spirit so look at the emotions in the family if there's rage or anger what is the root of it what what how does how far back does that go and just the emotions that you're feeling the emotions that of the person that might be difficult you're dealing with what are they feeling come against those things come against those things bind those things take authority over those things and that's also another thing that you can do in the courts so you don't have to get stuck. You can you can look around. For example, I have one person who um, comes from a history where one bad thing after another bad thing after another bad thing after ambulances and, and um, hospitals and deaths and suicides and tragedy and floods and everything you can imagine happens to this family. Um, and I know several people like that. And, and if they would just sit down with a piece of paper and begin to write down all the things that they can remember that happened to them and look at those events and look at where the trauma started, any kind of surgery that you have, any kind of uh, pharmaceutical uh, products that you're taking. Um, the pharmaceutical industry is created to make money, not to make you better, not to heal you. I hate to tell you that. Um, if you have to use them, use them, but get off of them, get healed as soon as you can. I'm not saying anything. I mean, God put doctors and nurses there, there, and, and the pharmaceutical products are products and copies of the original the essential oils, the herbs, the mushrooms, um, the trees, and so on. So they're just copies, but they're twisted them so they can make money off them, so they can keep you in cancer, so they can keep you sick and keep you in diabetes, so they can make more money. So, um, that's, look at that history, look at the emotions, look at the trauma, look at the surgeries, look at the um, hospital visits. Hospitals is an awesome place to pick up bad spirits. <laughs> so when you go in there, make sure you go in there with the right mindset and kick those spirits' butt. Okay, so that's just a little in a little nugget. Some things that you can take to the courts of heaven to deal with because Satan is a legalist. Okay, then. Um, but what God showed me about the word curses. Once you begin to realize some of the word curses spoken over you, that somebody might say, "Oh, you." always do that you always get so emotional or you always do that those are word curses and if you live with somebody like that you you i i you really really have to get in your private place so that you create within yourself an atmosphere so when you come out of your private place that that spouse or that person or that family member that is always digging into you always reminding of what you used to be or how you used to do stuff or who you used to be or putting you down and, and dragging you down with words um, so that the inside of you is so sure who you are in Christ that when you come out of your private, quiet time, that you change the atmosphere, okay? You need to take authority over that atmosphere, not like belligerently, not like uh, blah, 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 and blast the person. You're doing it. It's a spiritual attack. It's spiritually. And you have the power inside of you to to change the world around you so if you're one of those people that has that kind of spouses or thanksgivings uh, horrible christmas is horrible because people are digging into you speaking word curses over you um then use that time to get in your space to build yourself up and to change your atmosphere okay, so break those word curses now um the courts of heaven i mean this is really cool i'm writing a book i'm still writing a book Oh, but I'm excited uh, on the blood of uh, on communion, the supernatural power of of um, the blood of Jesus uh, and communion and health and everything else. So, so I went to church today, and I haven't been in church for about a year uh, because um, um, kind of been in isolation. I, I've had um, some problems I, I I realized that I, a church I had gone to was so religious that I picked up a religious spirit and I, I never realized it and I never put two and two together but every time I would go to that church they had awesome powerful moving of the Holy Spirit 
and they would always call you down to the altar to repent of what you did last night and to get free. And it would always be judgmental and critical. And one time the pastor, I was in leadership there, and one time the pastor came up to me and said, so have you repented? When I hadn't gone to their church for a few weeks and showed up, he got in my face and said that to me. And it was like, oh, what? How do you know what I've been doing or haven't been doing? And so I believe... Um, I would go into that church and I would begin to, my eyes would affect me and I would begin to see the pews would be like stripes and the stripes and, and lights and stuff would bother me. I would not want to go. I would hate and dread going to church. Um, <clears throat> and I didn't know why. I didn't know why I was feeling all the turmoil and the tra drama and, and stress when I go to the church, uh, especially with my eyes and my head and I didn't understand why until now. And this has been like five, six years ago. So I've been out of church for about a year because every time I go to church, I'd feel this like, oh, I'd feel this like pressure, like pushing me back, like don't go, you know, and just a, a, a stress. My relationship with God has been awesome. And I love being isolated and being alone at, at times because my relationship with God is so personal. But I realized just in the last couple of days, I had picked up a religious spirit from going to church, a religious church, a church that was always making you feel guilty, shamed, and condemned, and not teaching, uh, teaching you how to be good and do good, five points on how to do good and be good, and nothing about a relationship with Jesus and knowing Jesus and being a manifest son of God, walking in authority, power, and dominion, and ruling on this earth. But instead, ruling your body and thinking, you know, I have to do this, this, and this because my flesh wants to do this. No, it all, you have to get, it's about you and God, and God will help you with all the rest. So I had picked up this religious spirit. And this religious spirit, I did not realize all the things, I'm going to read some of the things one of my friends shared with me, that a religious spirit is connected with and does. And I got delivered to this, and I'm getting to the blood of Jesus and communion too. But a religious spirit... It, uh, it taught, it, it's about trading, it, it, uh, religious spirit is about trading, Satan was, uh, got cast down because of his multiple trading, and he traded, you know, with beauty, pride, all that stuff, it also has to do with judgment, legal, legalism, criticism, being a judgmental, being self-righteous, it brings on confusion, fear, fear of God, intolerance, intimidation, ignorance, fear, of, um, fear of loss of control, lack of faith, dishonoring leadership, Holding on to past, um, uh, I think it has something to do with the Jezebel spirit also. False holiness, blindness, uh, covenant breaking, apathy, fear of loss of, and um, I mean all kinds of stuff. And I had picked up a religious spirit and I had a lot of these tendencies. I have a problem with authority. <laughs> I was in the military and I absolutely hated it because the, the, the guy above me was always drunk. And he was always womanizing and always talking stupid about women. And he was my boss simply because I was a plumber. He was a plumber. He was my boss and he had a stripe more than me. So I had listened to him. I couldn't honor that because of his ignorance. But I'm learning how to honor authority even if I disagree with them. And, and so I see some of these things in me. And I had a spirit of <clears throat> religion. I thought a spirit of religion was just being rigid and, you know, intolerant and you know judgmental and critical but it's so much more than that anyway <clears throat> i realized that i picked up a spirit of religion and it was keeping me from going to church because i was being judgmental and critical and i wasn't allowing the holy spirit when i go to church the holy spirit talks to me and says things to me and i have tons of notes he can take one thing the pastor says and, and he, me and him are off. We are taking notes like crazy because I God is talking to me. And <clears throat> I hadn't been in church for a year because of that religious spirit was keeping me from going to church, number one. And that religious spirit was harassing me physically and causing fear and stuff in my life. And um, learning about communion and the power of communion, which I'm going to get to in a minute. Um, really helped me and then taking authority over the spirit of religion and not allowing it to, to come into my life taking over word curses and this has also to do with the spirit of religion and I might have even gotten uh, opened the door to the spirit of religion a long time ago because one of the first churches I went to was in New Hampshire and this particular pastor <clears throat> I have I've always 
pastors have always had trouble with me because I never just believed what they said. I went home and I studied and I grew and I knew and I applied what I know. But one of my first pastors when I got married went around warning everybody to stay away from Robin. She's hyper grace or was no hyper faith. She's hyper faith. She believes, you know, the word and this and that. Stay away from her. She's hyper faith. I don't know what else he spoke over me, but he said that to my best friend. He said that to other people. He warned them to stay away from me. I'm a member of his congregation. Okay, so that was probably a word curse, and that's one of the word curses that came up when I broke this other word curse over me that either you really like Robin or you really hate Robin. But go back in your history. Think of think of things that a pastor or a congregation and people spoke over you. Break those word curses because words are frequencies. Words never, ever go away. They are frequencies. They are out floating in space. They, they are, are absorbed into things, into walls, into water. Water holds frequencies. Um, look at Dr. Emoto, who did an experiment um, um, with uh, ice crystals. And um, I did an experiment on rice. Check out on YouTube my video. It's called um, um, the, the Experiment with Rice. Uh, I don't know. I'll put a link down here later on. Um, but words matter so you want to break those words off of you now when i take communion one of the things god said to me today which i thought was absolutely absolutely amazing was because i absolutely love communion it's so powerful he said because i said i'm going to church today i was really excited i said god please let him take communion please let him take communion today well when i got there they were taking communion i was so excited and so god talks to me um when you take communion it's not a time to repent it's a time to come to the table to receive it's a time to come and eat eat from everything that is in the body if you know somebody that plays ice hockey really well and is a christian I eat off of that. I say, God, I receive off the body of Christ. I take communion now and I receive how good um, um, uh, Shua plays ice hockey. And I just receive off of his talent. God, you were the ultimate God who taught people how to play ice hockey. So I receive that talent from you as I take communion. Uh, if somebody else has done something successfully in the body of Christ, it's available to you when you come to the table of communion, which is really cool. Um, so I'm getting better at the things that I do and the passions that I have because I am taking from the resources from the body of Christ at the table. There's a bowl of jello. There's a bowl of chocolate cake. There's a bowl of, of, of um, hamburger, or turkey, or whatever. You come to eat. So everybody's like a potluck. Everybody brings to the table what they have succeeded at, and that's available to you. Now, what God said to me, that's a revelation for free that I shared in another uh, video. But the revelation he shared for me is he said, okay, let me tell you this first. He said, God, what's the difference between the work that the Holy Spirit does and the work that the angels do? And he said that the work that the Holy Spirit does is inside of us. Uh, our thoughts are the strength, the power, the health, the healing, the wholeness, the youthfulness, renewed youth. Um leading and guiding and directing us we smell something or see something and we say oh i want to go there okay i'm going to stop there and that's the holy spirit leads us from the inside of us from our mind from our thoughts from our physical body the angels lead us from the outside they lead us in directions they lead people to us they set up situations and circumstances they bring the body parts from heaven to put inside of our body the angels minister on the outside of us in circumstances and events and things and 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 directions and they manifest it in, in physical form sometimes where the holy spirit works inside of us so now that i said that um what god shared with me in church today about communion is that when you take this is my communion in a medicine thing to remind me, I say a 53 or 54, um, by his stripes we have been healed. Um, you know, he's taken our griefs and sorrows. I think it's 53 or 54. Anyway, I take communion. I usually take a seed or whatever of this because it reminds me of healing and health and wholeness. Well, he said, when we take communion, he said, this is my body. He didn't say, here, here's a nut. This is a representative of my body. Now take it. He said, this is my body. It was broken for you. Okay. It wasn't broken for him. It was broken for you. Okay. Take it and eat it. This is my body. So when he said today, 
when you take communion, you're taking something physical that represents something physical and represents something spiritual. He said this, when you take communion, see, let's see if I can get the exact words that he said. When you take communion, you are, that communion is the transport. This is the exact words he said. He said, communion is the transport of life from heaven into your physical body okay your mind your physical mind your physical body so this is why he said communion is the transport that brings life from heaven into the physical realm into your body it's like whoa that is awesome and communion is not something that you have to sit there and I was getting in bondage over communion because I wanted to take it all the time, but it was like, oh, this takes a half an hour. I'm going to have to sit here. I'm going to think. I'm going to meditate. I don't want to rip off Jesus, so I want to meditate. I want to, you know, I want to remember. And God, it's not like that. They sat down to eat a meal. They sat down to commune together. Expect Jesus to show up with you. Expect to hear from him, to talk to him. It's a relationship. When you sit down to communion. And you know what? Sometimes you sit down... And you have a burrito. I mean, not a burrito, um, a bagel. You sit down and you have a bagel. Maybe they have coffee and you have milk or hot chocolate and you have a bagel. How long does that take? Five minutes. Sometimes you sit down to Thanksgiving and it's a big spread and it's a lot of stuff. And, you know, you're thinking and you're focusing and you're meditating. So communion does not have to be a big burden. It does not have to be something that you take and you go... Okay, God, thank you for this, thank you for that, thank you for this, thank you for that, this, that, this, that. And I'm sitting here in half an hour, and I'm going through, and it becomes really rich, ritualistic, and it becomes, um, oh, i got to take communion. No, you can grab communion. Here's my, here's my nut. <laughs> I'm going to grab communion, or a piece of bread, or a cracker, or something. And um, my drink, here's my drink. Okay, I'm going to take communion. Thank you, Jesus. I engage this body, this body that's transport from heaven, that's transporting life from heaven into my physical body, healing my physical body. I receive this. When you take a pill, when you take a pharmaceutical pill, you take, you just take the pill. Or if you're smart, you say, God, I take this pill. I bring it under the blood of Jesus. I bring this pill under the blood of Jesus and I pray that you take control over it and it does what it's supposed to do according to you that it's healthy and it's safe and it's for my body it works for my body and not against my body and doesn't cause all those side effects that's how you should take a pharmaceutical pill if you're going to take a pill that's how you should take any kind of medicine or any kind of product um, but so when you take communion you know it can be quick you can you can it can also be slow you can engage it when I take communion, it's like, Father, thank you for sending Jesus to this earth. I take communion now. This is the body of Christ. This body was broken for me. This body took every sickness, every disease. This body took aging on me. I take this now, and I engage, and I take it, and I engage the DNA of Jesus, the memory of Jesus, that DNA that carries the memory of everything Jesus did on the earth for me, that DNA that's in the body and the blood of Jesus that was broken for me, that is a book, a scroll, it's telling me everything that's available for me. I engage that. I engage my mind to understand that DNA that's going into my body right now. That transport from heaven. That's bringing life from heaven. Eternal life. <clears throat> to know God. To know Jesus. I open up the eyes of my understanding. To understand when I take this communion. Everything Jesus did for me. I want to know what Jesus did when he walked on this earth. That's recorded in this blood and in the body and in the DNA. I want to know what this isn't even written in the Bible. I want to know. They said twice that Jesus did so much stuff that if it was written in the Bible, it couldn't even fill all the books in the earth. It was so much. I want to know what is that? What is that stuff that Jesus did when he walked on this earth that isn't even written in the Bible, that isn't recorded? What is that stuff? I want to know it. The DNA is in the body and the blood of Jesus. That DNA is in my body when I take communion. 
that DNA, that all knowing, that that DNA, that wisdom, knowledge, discernment that tells me how to play ice hockey, that tells me how to publish books for my authors, that tells me how to promote them, the tools I can use to make my job easier, uh, ventriloquism, how to use my puppets, um, how to how to teach people about essential oils and detoxing their body and their mind through essential oils instead of pharmaceutical, how to get wholeness and and clean and 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 what the world is really doing to make money that is killing you with what you eat, breathe sleep and put on um, how to reach the people I engage that spirit of wisdom and knowledge and might and all those things that's in this body and in the blood of Jesus and that's not the only body I engage I engage you guys because you guys are part of the body you guys have skills wisdom and talent that I want so you have succeeded in something for example, Dottie Osteen succeeded in having victory over cancer. If you have cancer, you can take the body and the blood of Jesus and you can engage that success that Dottie Osteen did in having victory over cancer because she is the body of Christ. She might not be living on the earth today, but she's not dead. Nobody who is in Christ is dead. We are all one body, one church, one family whether we're temporarily living on the earth or whether we already moved to heaven. We're still one body. We're still one, uh, one unit in Christ. You can access through communion, through the body and the blood and the DNA, uh, in the body and the blood, the, the scroll of who Jesus is, what he did for you, what um, other successes that other people have at the communion table, the potluck, the completed victory, the meals, that people have successfully engaged in and accomplished is at the table of communion. And it's not just for healing. It's for skill. It's for talent. It's for business. It's for com uh, com commerce. It's for money. It's for uh, being successful. It's for taking those mountains of entertainment or um, health or business or school teaching or whatever. That's all available to you. And so through, through communion, so, so the communion is the transport from heaven that brings life from heaven into your physical body, your physical mind, and into your soul for deliverance, for healing, for whatever it is that you need, skill, talent, finances, a relationship with God, closer relationship with God, manifestation as a son of God. Um, and remember that the angels, here's another thing. Oh, please get this. God's really drilling this into my head. Think about how much you talk to demons. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I command you to get out of here. Spirit of fear, I take authority over you, dominion over you. You're always talking to devils. Who put it in our head that we can't talk to angels? They're our ministering spirits. They work for us. So while you're saying 20 times a day you rebuke the devil, how many times a day did you say to the angels, angels, the word of God says, by the stripes I'm healed, so go get me some new eyes in the warehouse of heaven. I receive them. Thank you, Father. I take them now. How many times have we said, angels, I everything I set my hands to do prospers. I need skill and wisdom and tools for this. Angels, I'll, I'll, you hearken to the voice of the word. I'm speaking the voice of the word. I'm giving the word voice. Go do this. Go do that. We tell the devil what to do, but we aren't telling the angels what to do. We need to speak the word. We are not worshiping angels when we speak to them. If we worshipped angels when we speak to them, we'd be worshipping devils when we speak to them. Because we're always telling devils what to do, okay? We're even telling our car what to do. You stupid car, you're no good. You know, you're always falling apart. See, those are word curses. Those are telling the devil what to do. You got to speak blessings. You got to send the angels out to hearken to the voice of the word. The voice says, everything I set my hands to do prospers. Thank you, Father. I sent the angels out to... To bring wisdom to me, to bring skill to me, to knowledge in whatever area I need it. I use it for hockey. Father, I thank you that I have a spirit of might because I am connected with you. I am one spirit with you. I have a spirit of might. I can ice skate. I can rollerblade. I can do it stick handle with skill, with talent. I see myself. And my confession is I see myself playing hockey. I see myself being at the right place at the right time, making the right play. I see myself keeping my head up so that nobody bangs into me and so on. Whatever skill, whatever talent, whatever passion God has given you, you can take it at the communion table and receive it at the communion table. And you can also 
just receive it from the body of Christ because you're all one body by the words of your mouth. So let me see if that's everything I wanted to share with you um, about the body and the blood. Um, oh, another thing about the blood. Oh, oh, the blood and court. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot that. Okay, the courts of heaven. I, I, the courts of heaven, some people can argue and say the courts of heaven aren't anymore, but no, we're supposed to rule and mandate and how do we do that? We do it through a legal system. Things on earth are copies of things of heaven. We have high courts in, on, on, on earth and courts of heaven. We, we have to go to the courts of heaven because Satan is a legalist. And um, he will bring accusations against us. And when we drink the blood of Jesus. Oh, this is so cool. When we drink the blood of Jesus, it is a court thing. Okay. The body and the blood of Jesus communion is a court thing. Because a will is only somebody's will. You only receive an inheritance and a will when the person has died. When you eat the body and the blood of Jesus, you are proving he has died. And you are applying the blood of Jesus to the court record. You are applying the blood of Jesus. Say, hey, I'm innocent. I am innocent. I'm taking the body and the blood of Jesus internally inside of me. I am innocent. This blood and this body proves it. Somebody paid the price for my sin. The wages of sin is death. This is Jesus' death. He paid for my sins. I am innocent. You cannot put that sickness or disease on me. I don't care if it came down my bloodline, if my mom and dad died of cancer or whatever. You can't put cancer on me because I have the blood of Jesus here as proof that he paid for that sin of the fallen nature made me a brand new creature. So I'm using the blood of Jesus in my court cases. I'm using the blood of Jesus against any sickness, disease, aging, uh, lack of knowledge, uh, fear, pain, all uh, lack of funds. Uh, the blood and the body of Jesus is proof that I am innocent, that the devil has no right to put me in poverty, even if I wasn't operating correctly or didn't have the knowledge or lost my money. I am innocent by the blood of Jesus. I have that grace and I apply that when I take communion. So the blood of Jesus, uh, communion is part of the courts of heaven, part of your innocence, part of declaring that innocence. When you take it, you are declared innocent. And there is no accusation against you because the devil brings sickness. If, if you look back at every major sickness in your life or major event in your life, um, they say if you look back statistically six months earlier, something happened that opened the door of trauma or something, an event happened that allowed a spirit to come in and a spirit to bring something. Every traumatic experience in your life brings a spirit a demonic spirit so you want to get rid of that because they're influencing they're putting sickness and they're putting disease on you so go through stuff and pull down those strongholds of those traumatic experiences also every traumatic experience pretty much has um a lying spirit a wrong spirit that is um saying this is what really happened the way you see the event in your eyes opens up the door for the demonic because you're believing wrong about an event. And part of inner healing is taking that person back to that event, looking around, and um, um, then Jesus shows up, and Jesus shows them what lie they're believing, and Jesus shows them the truth. And that happens a lot in traumatic uh, things. You're believing one thing when that might not even be true, and even if it is true, it's not true according to God because he has different standards and he sees things differently. Um, so, so in the court of heaven, I mean, those are just some really cool things. Um, and remember, when you come to communion, it's to eat. It's to get nourishment. Nourishment, healing, vitamins, minerals, nutrition, life from heaven. Use the transport of communion to have life from heaven. Um, I think... Yeah, oh, and the other thing is, uh, yeah, I said Jesus died, and in order to receive the inheritance, there has to be the death of the person that you're inheriting it from, and that was Jesus. And so when you take communion, you're also reminding um, every spirit around you and every entity around you and yourself that Jesus died, and therefore you have the right as co-heirs with him to have everything. Um, Jesus said that um, the Holy Spirit will show you everything that's mine, and all things are mine. So, Jesus is not physically on the earth. We're, we're the physical body of Jesus on the earth today. So, everything that was on the earth for him, 
when he was in the flesh is ours because we are all one and what everything on the earth that's physical that we need is available to us like jesus said he he sent his disciples to get the donkey that was not his donkey he didn't own that donkey today you'd call it stealing he took that donkey that belonged to somebody else and he said if they say anything tell them the master has need of it okay so how would you like if i went to your house and got your in your car and you stopped me and i said well the master has need of it you know and you would let it go well i'm not talking about stealing i'm talking about spiritually you send the angels to do it you know you have the wealth of the wicked you have a whole lot of stuff that you don't know you have because you are not taking your inheritance and, and take it through the body and the blood of Jesus he died and paid for you to have it okay so receive what he paid for you to have take it it's yours you're not stealing from anybody after all if you think about it remember the people that worked um, from sun up to sundown and he, they agreed to get this this coin and then somebody came at the last hour and got the same coin they got um, and they worked in the heat of the day and the sweat of the day but yet they all got paid the same when you're God's kids it all belongs to you none of it belongs to the enemy or the enemy's kids okay so send the angels out to to get um, what you need for your ministry you know send the angels out send the angels out by speaking the word and they hearken to the voice of the Thank you for joining us for today's podcast. If it was a blessing to you, please consider financially supporting us by clicking on the Sponsor This Podcast button. Any links mentioned in this podcast will be listed below along with any affiliate products, services, or partner websites. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your social media site. And remember, it is natural to be supernatural.